The Horrors of Christy Pearson's Childhood, Wails of Torment, by Ken Wells. Chapter 1. Wretched screeches from the rust bucket car pierced deep into Christy's soul, not allowing her to rest during the two hours on BC-95. How they'd gotten to the highway, she could not recall. It had all happened so fast, the recent events were shrouded in a fog. Her rescuer, Camry, squeezed her hand every so often, her way of checking in. Motherly instinct had to have kicked in because she would not let her drift into the void. Without her, there was no chance of survival. Christy squeezed Camry's hand this time. It was the first time that Christy had moved a muscle in over an hour, but to her, it had only felt like a couple of minutes. Camry sighed. Her eyes, though, remained fixed on the road ahead. Christy stared at the mountains that had been a permanent fixture of her life. They were the only thing that had withstood the tumultuous year leading to. Well, she wasn't sure what was happening now. She wasn't even sure if any traces of civilization were left. Everyone was gone. The screams of her neighbors on the first night of the attack still echoed in her ears all these months later. With each passing month, the werewolves shifted back to their human forms less often. Within six months, the neighbors who she never would have suspected had begun their feast upon those foolish enough to stick around. Her family was that foolish, believing that their lifelong friends would not betray them. There would be no familiar faces from here on out, only the woman who had championed her salvation back at the crypt. Finally, settling back into the present, Christy asked, Where are we going? The U.S. Tears welled up in Christie's eyes. She had never left Canada. All she had ever known was the Calgary suburbs and the mountain towns in which she had spent her summers. That was all that the world had to offer and she was content with that. Steam. Christie's hand was practically crushed by Camry's reflex. Taking a glance, the dash was more lit up by her family's Christmas tree, which her dad had always taken so much pride in. Looking back out the windshield, steam billowed up and around the car. All visibility was lost while an odd, sweet smell filled the car. Crap. Camry released, moving both hands onto the wheel. Her head bobbed as her lips kept moving, as though the words were stuck on repeat. She reminded Christy of the Jesus bobblehead in her uncle's car that her dad always complained about. Thump. Thump, thump. The car turned off while still in motion. No! Camry turned the ignition, but nothing happened. She stomped the accelerator before turning the key again, but no response. Stomping and turning the key so hard, Christy thought that she was going to snap the key in half. Her words kept flowing with ever-increasing intensity, smacking the steering wheel, shockwaves rattled the dash. The car vibrated, sounding like a tin can full of rocks as it rolled to a stop. The screams of the old, suffering vehicle came to an end without so much as a whimper. Not now. Camry leaned her forehead against the steering wheel with her eyes closed. She stayed like that for many long, deep breaths. Can you fix it? Camry snorted. <laughs> I got a degree in bioengineering, not car maintenance. She turned her head, still resting against the wheel, shooting Christy a smile. The smile did nothing to hide how worried she was. Christy stared out the window. The mountains were low here. There was no snow-covered peaks, only rounded, tree-covered mounds. They had passed several small open fields with random corn shooting up in their midst. People used to live here, but she couldn't tell if they still did. A thin plume of smoke was rising up from the barely visible house tucked within the trees. Can they help? Camry was still mouthing swear words at the steering wheel. Her fingers moved as though she was counting something. What it was, Christy could not tell. M Miss Camry... Her name seemed to awaken her out of whatever deep thought that she had been lost within. What are you looking at? Her eyebrows furrowed as she scanned the woods through the windshield. Oh. Do you? Camry shushed her while continuing to stare through the trees at the cabin. Hearing Camry shush her again ignited something within Christy. She didn't quite understand it. Something was growing inside of her. The word came out suddenly without any filter that she could have applied. No. Camry's face softened as she turned to Christy. You're 11, right? Yes. Christy's eyes blazed with fury. Camry nodded. I'll treat you more like an adult. Her eyes moved back toward the cabin. 
Two men were walking toward them out of the woods. One was a short, stout man in a heavy plaid jacket. He carried a hunting rifle and had a pair of binoculars hanging down from around his neck. His beard was white, but he didn't look old enough to be a grandfather. The other was a middle-aged Asian priest. His arrival proved Christy wrong. Fingering the car door open, Christy ran with open arms. Father Thomas! She fell into her priest's arms. Christy? The priest flinched before wrapping his arms around her. Christy Pearson, is it really you? Yes, father. She squeezed him tight. Where are your parents? When Christy's squeeze slackened, he said, Never mind that, for now. I'm just glad to see you. He looked over at the car. Who's that with you? Camry had stepped out of the vehicle, pistol in hand. Half her body was hidden behind the vehicle while the gun pointed down on the hood. Camry. She saved me from the werewolves. I'd like to meet her, Father Thomas said while making a sign of the cross over Christie's head. He turned to the grumpy man whose belly stuck out further than Christie was tall. Paul, this young lady used to come to my parish back when I was in Calgary. Do you believe that we could take two more into our fold? Father, the gruff man began. As long as they're headed where we're headed, they're welcome to come along for the ride. Like I said to you, I just can't guarantee anyone's safety. That thing guarding the border is mighty fierce. What thing? Yet again, the adults had excluded her from the conversation, still smoldering for before the flame lit easily. The duo continued their march toward the broken-down vehicle. As they approached the vehicle, Paul grumbled under his breath. Arriving at the vehicle, Father Thomas stuck out his hand to greet Camry. Tension hung in the air as Camry made no move, eyes still trained on the two men as though ready for a fight. He pulled it back and straightened himself. Seeing the only two people she trusted facing off sent chills running down Christie's spine. No sooner had someone returned to her life than she would possibly lose him once more. Christie put her faith in Father Thomas that he could de-escalate the situation, but it took a lot of faith. I don't trust priests, Camry said especially with minors. Father Thomas pursed his lips as he gave a short nod. He turned and gestured toward Paul. This is Mr. Williamson. He was the owner of a hunting store not far from here. He's been escorting people like us across the border. Camry squinted. Her eyes shifted between the two men. Her muscles were tense. The gun still faced downward, but her trigger finger tapped the side of the gun. Why would we need to be escorted? There's a wraith. Paul said in a hoarse voice. He trusts me and only me to cross the border. Anyone I bring is okay by him. Anyone not with me gets killed on the spot. Camry's eyes darted to the stout man. How do you... It's my arrangement. None of your beeswax. Christy, can I talk with you privately? Camry gestured for her to come to the other side of the vehicle. Once they had arrived, Camry bent down closer to her ear. In a hushed voice, she said, I don't think that we should trust these men. We will need a way to get out of here. Father Thomas will make sure that we are safe. We can trust him. Camry squeezed Christie's hand, pulling her closer while staring sternly into her eyes. Something's off. I can feel it. Trust me, like I've trusted you. Christy whispered back. She barely contained her irritation, but knew not to add to the stressful situation. She had seen that play out before. She didn't need it now. Father Thomas would never let anything happen to me. Camry cringed. Christy felt the same way about Paul, but didn't dare to say it. Not when Camry didn't even trust Father Thomas. Christy heard what she thought was a howl, but it sounded too far away to care. Besides, no one else heard it.